Hello everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and Stanley, for right now. This is uh, my one and only episode for my Let's Play series for the Stanley Parable, uh, which the entire reason I'm playing this is because I needed a kind of one-off game uh, in between uh, Let's Play games right now, and uh, this one ended up being in my backlog. I've never played it before. I have heard of it, so I think I kind of know the gist. I wouldn't say I'm going in completely blind. Uh, so I know the idea behind it, but I've never played it myself, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, consider supporting me via patreon.com slash roguewatson. Shout out to Platinum Patrons Andrew, Richard, Joe, Will, Tiny Dancer, Crazy Pet, Nick, and Ribzung. Gold patrons, RPG Paper Crafts, Charming Grenade, Pretty Boy and Yuma, Marcos David Vicente, Gilberto, Sean AK, Cert 2B, Adam, Dead Lizard Lounge, and Sam. Thank you all very much for your support. Also, it is the one year anniversary for the Patreon, which is pretty cool. Uh, shout out to uh, Andrew, Brian, and Juzy, AK RPG Paper Crafts for sticking with me for a whole year. I appreciate uh, your support and all my patrons' supports. Very cool. Thanks to you, we can play games like this. Uh, so yeah, we're going to jump right into the Stanley Parable. I don't know if my webcam's in an okay position, but uh, we're going to go with this for now. Uh, and tell, let me know if the volume is uh, good or bad. It's always something I have to play around with the first time that I play a game in terms of my volume versus the game's volume. But let's jump in and see. This is never the end. This is never the end is loading. Sean. I understand this is a older game that was built uh that was originally a Half-Life 2 mod, I think. As many games were. And then became its own game. And has the funnies, which is good. Yeah, I turned it down to about 30 or 40 percent volume, which is usually what I go with. My webcam is obfuscating the loading bar. There we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Mm, this is a soothing Employee narrator. number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, oh, telling a, him what buttons to push, a 90s how computer. long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. Every day? And although others might have considered it soul-rending, <laughs> Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in. As though he had been made exactly for this job. This feels like it was a precursor Stanley to Portal already. <laughs> was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Became flat. Something he would never quite forget. Flat Stanley. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. <laughs> Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his, his, his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. That's my cue. All right. No buttons. Mouse buttons do nothing. Space does nothing. I can crouch. Crouch does something. That is all my immediate ideas <laughs> for pushing buttons. I got nothing. All right, we're leaving the office. E. E does things. Okay. Can close but not open. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. This is very much a precursor to uh, what they call walking simulators, which is not a great name for those games. Think of like first person narrative adventure games? That's kind of a mouthful, too. I hate Mondays. Uh, this person's a riot. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co workers. This person just has a pencil sharpener. Who farted? Everybody has hilarious mugs. Alright, so let's go to the meeting room. It's in slight disarray. It could also be the opening to a zombie movie. Very samey. This is not a horror game, right? <laughs> I'm gonna fucking freak out. This is already making me nervous. There's a lot of empty rooms. What the when hell? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, did I? <laughs> All right, I'll go along with it. Oh, that's freaky. Close behind me. Enter the door on my left. It's like I was told. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office hoping he might find an answer there. The future was yesterday, tomorrow is now. Who moved my desk? Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. <laughs> Profits, things, money, more money. Graphs about things and money. <laughs> we have our new product. Somebody's very saucy about this. Is, this is Office Space, the game. Find teenagers to put in teenage demographic. Work harder, hard worker. Rate of increase in graphs per slide. <laughs> oh no. The graphs are taking over. Bureaucracy gone mad. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to the boss's room. Ooh, the broom closet. Hey, I could open Stanley that door. stepped into the broom closet, <laughs> but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There's a broom in the broom closet. There All was of these nothing here. No choice to make, <laughs> no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Oh no, I'm gonna piss off the narrator if I stay in the broom closet, aren't I? No horror, okay. It was baffling that Stanley was still <laughs> just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> are yep. you are you really still in the broom <laughs> closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Because you Please keep offer saying me some funny explanation shit. here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. Broom closet is my home now. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd <sighs> said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me, because literally, this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. This is great. Keep coming. I'm staying in this broom closet. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. <laughs> Maybe when you go talk about this with your friends, you'll say, Ow! Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? <laughs> the broom closet ending was my favorite. 
I hope your friends find this concerning. This broom closet is my friend now. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <gasps> how dare you? He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. <laughs> also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. What? <laughs> oh, no. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your <laughs> countless human physiological vulnerabilities. So many. It's indicative so of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics <laughs> and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is wow. not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. This is all still very relevant. This is like a six-year-old game. I finally kill it. <laughs> that was worth staying in this broom closet for a long time. All right. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. Second player. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. I mean, they did label the door broom closet. Come on. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right, I'm following. Uh, I'm following the narrator so far. Realize it's making fun of my choices, so we went a little bit out of our way and got the funny Oh, this looks completely different. Dang, boss is living good. This is like Batman's office. Wow. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover <laughs> not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who <laughs> orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, Four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Two, eight, four, five. Where's the keyboard? Behind the desk? Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly oh. know that the combination was two, eight, four, five. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the <laughs> keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code no. by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Uh. This is like some Bioshock shit now. Man, I'm glad this isn't a horror game. <laughs> button. Alright game, I'm in the elevator. I'm done as I was told. A loading screen! <laughs> so far I'm following the commands very carefully. A diligent office worker. Is there death in this game? Is there an Descending ending? Descending deeper into the building. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. 
Stanley walked straight ahead brain. through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Well, there's some environmental storytelling. Mind Control Facility or Escape. <laughs> you know, I have been following the commands pretty diligently so far. But uh, Escape seems to be written in blood. Or maybe just red crayon. That path looks pretty fucking ominous, too. You know what? Mind control facility. Seems like a real winner. Also looks like Cerebro. Well. No, it looks less like Cerebro. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley <laughs> thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I don't know, do I? Little sound effects too, you can hear yourself like all middle grades. King King. Now the monitors jumped to life, oh boy. their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. That is terrifying. Can I find 427? There I am. Eh, looks like an office room. Nothing special. This mind control Large facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? <laughs> the narrator is really selling this game for me. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Would I now? Mind control status is offline. And go to the facility tower. Mind controls idle awaiting input. I'm just really in another simulation, aren't I, you bastards? And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation. To put an end to this horrible place. But I'm being place, controlled right now by the narrator. And everything it stood for. It's all what you want me to do, isn't it? Turned it off. 
Was that a terrible decision? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. <laughs> Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. <laughs> Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. Oh. It was perhaps it's a really the low only textured thing world. I don't know if we want to go outside. Stanley stepped through the open door. <laughs> what if I don't step through the open door? It does look pretty nice, despite the low textures. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. I've lost control. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Eh, achievement unlocked, beat the game. <laughs> well, that was easy. Too easy. I just followed all the commands. And thus beat the game. Which is exactly what they wanted me to do. So I should start. Uh, there were a few branching paths. There was the door I could have taken either side. Open it up back here. Uh, there was the escape route. There was turning the button differently. Back in here. I'm just about to leave again. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? It just starts over. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. To the employee lounge. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. <laughs> it had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Could not stand. I moved around. Yes. Quickly. Really, really worth it being here in the room. <laughs> A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. I really want to jump. You disabled my jump button, you bastards. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy <laughs> and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. This is like the broom closet all over again. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed <laughs> and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. Dare you know how video games work? God, they really don't give you anything to interact with either. At least in other puzzle games, you're interacting with stuff. This one, you're just along for the ride. All right, fine. 
But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Mm, but there's an open door straight ahead. Let's keep uh, disobeying him. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible <laughs> he wasn't fired years ago. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Ooh. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that it... But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, <laughs> Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> Thank you. Let's try this again. So you can die, confirmed. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I'll give you a run button. Crouch is the only thing you can do, and I really wonder why they let you crouch. It seems like it's actually useful. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps Hidden he wanted paths, to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Admire it. Yes. This room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. All right, let's continue and not kill ourselves. Just throwing myself off Stanley the cargo lift so count as an ending. Following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. I could try to fall uh, someone here. someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you for... What? Yeah. Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? <laughs> Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why... I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. I'm at war with the narrator. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Did I? Did I walk through the red door? No. I think we're going to be contrarian. Blue door. Aha. Perhaps you misunderstood. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. Oh no. Choice is an illusion. I still don't think we're communicating properly. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. The red The goddamn pen is blue. <gasps> the blue door's behind me. I can go backwards. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. <laughs> you want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Oh. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map <laughs> because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. <laughs> Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? <laughs> Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out oh. specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I, I did. Broke the game. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. <laughs> Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Skill Work trees? With me. You've given me absolutely nothing <laughs> so far. Tell you what. 
Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Mm. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Hmm, I unlocked a third option. Ooh. Is... Okay, I'm going to stop you there. <laughs> now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited <laughs> from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Um... I mean, we can give it like a three. What do we think? I enjoy having another room. Oh, of course. A three. A three. Really. Maybe next time <laughs> we can get you to form an actual opinion. He's saucy you know? about it. Any level of critical thinking or oh. engagement with your surroundings? Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Oh, mm -hmm. so condescending. Wonderful. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. The Stanley Parable Worldwide Leaderboard. What? People take seconds? Oh my gosh. 21% of players skipped the intro sequence. Only the worst 3% of player chose the blue door. 98% of players are more attractive than Stanley. How long did it take you to get to the correct door? This is you. <laughs> 7 minutes 37. You are ranked 9,328 out of 9,000. Error friends list empty. Oh, I'm being trolled by the game itself. A dead rat is offline. This is your superior. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> it's just trolling me about saying around. All right, so we go through the orange door. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. I... Let's give it a four. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, <laughs> and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? And how quickly... Perfect. Let me boot it up. I broke the uh, actual office simulator and <laughs> entered something completely different. Just by being absolutely contrarian. Game, what the baby fuck? Crawls left towards danger. What the you fuck? You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. No. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. <laughs> I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. Four so hours. why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. <laughs> kind of makes a horrible sound when you click it. This is a horrible game. I think I'm gonna let this baby die. To be fair, it should know better than to crawl towards fire. You heartless bastard. <laughs> Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Yeah, a little of both. Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out, I'm out, I'm done. It's over. Aww. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Sat through four hours of that? No, I can't imagine. Does something actually happen? Well, Stanley, is this any better? This is Minecraft. At last, the one thing you've always desired. 
A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. <laughs> Will it ever be enough? Well, I'll say this. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm I going to build a narrator. house. <laughs> this will go here. No, I can't jump. Here. I'm stuck here. And then... <laughs> Let's see. What does it need? I, uh, yes, of course. And just to finish it all off... Yes. A door. It's complete. I made this standing. You made a Look door. at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel, feel ashamed, ashamed at your own inadequacy. inadequacy. <laughs> ah, but it's you've good. only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please step inside and make yourself comfortable. A whole Minecraft world, and you built a damn door. Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. <laughs> this is a completely different game now. <laughs> I have lost the thread. I'm off the rails. We're just playing Minecraft now, apparently. Oh my, it looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? Oh, I have nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. <laughs> I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. One out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Okay, new game. Ooh. There's some growling at the end. That was kind of scary. It's gonna just shunt me on game to game. Now I kind of miss the office. <laughs> yes! I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. I couldn't have done it's it portal. any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Let's go find out what the hell this is. <laughs> yep, we're in Aperture Laboratories. We're in the Portal universe. Little game crossover. Oh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. Your forte. Indeed. Genius. Genius. <laughs> so patronizing. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. I really don't care much to see you stumble through any more of these games. Uh, and I highly doubt you're any wiser for the experience. Oh, God. That was freaky. Oh, you still see the circle up there. Oof. Boy, that gave me chills just falling that far. Work in progress. Was this before? This I mean, obviously it had to be after Portal. Was this did Portal have you go behind the scenes, or was that Portal Two? This feels a lot like that. All right, narrator, come back. I miss you, and I'm lonely and scared. I don't know what's going on. Everything's dark. Oh God. Fell into something. More hallways. Except everything's like dark and under construction. 
I don't like this. Narrator, come back. I'm sorry. Light. Four two seven. It's me. I'm four two seven. Ooh, I got a much better console now. Can I interact with anything in here? Jump achievement unlocked. Oh, as I keep trying to press the space bar. <laughs> I can crouch though. There's nothing in my room. Very disappointed. Big blue screen. I'm supposed to leave it? Oh shit. I wonder what he found. Oh. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. And if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. <laughs> I do That's need him. who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. <laughs> it's very I ominous. Can wait. Please, narrator, I'm sorry. Do I start again? Oh boy. We have more ominous music and now there's paper everywhere. All of his co-workers were... Wait, no. This isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? It's 427. It's the same, it's just papers everywhere. Lots of papers. Alright. So it does remember what you've done. It's still the same game. It's fascinating. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Um Okay, we'll do the left door this time. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling room. a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. What if we go downstairs this time. But Stanley just couldn't do it. Hmm. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he I believed need. everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence like in a, a single Twilight's moment episode. for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. Yeah, like none of these room for designs example, make sense. Why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? 
<laughs> no, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. Stuck in a loop. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, boy. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so <laughs> much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who <laughs> found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't God, have to take for responsibility so long. for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. Which just breaks you down. I want you do my apartment else. and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Skirts that am line between okay. funny and extremely disturbing. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss, I have an office, I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. Oh, I must be real, change. I must be. Can anyone uh, hear my creepy. voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Jesus. <laughs> Stop fucking with me, game. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, boy. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. Oh no! But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy Aww, people look like. Found dead on the and sidewalk. in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. I 
I guess that was one of the endings. Man, so if you go downstairs, it is pretty fucking messed up. That was by far, I think, the most messed up one. He just goes crazy. Oh, I lost the papers on the ground. Ooh, there's a phone ringing. Hi, Stanley. I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Huh. Everything's just slightly different. narrator. It's all quiet. <laughs> I can flick all the computers. Off. really don't like having a narrator. It's so lonely. When Stanley came to a set of two <laughs> open doors, he entered the door on his left. Guess we'll do the left one. So, we've gone downstairs. We haven't gone Yet down the there escape there was not path. a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. When was that one option to go to the first door on the left? That was going to the right door, wasn't it? I missed that one too. Ooh, executive bathroom. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast, money crisp. Extreme Bathrooms Magazine. <laughs> it's time. Why is this room here? This room has to have some significance. Yep, I can't interact with the damn thing. Really nice wallpaper, though. Open this door, though. What? Business strategy is holding a gun to the head of a panda? Ooh. Can't go in this elevator. God damn it, there's so many paths. Oh, I missed the paper. Look down, I missed that.
<laughs> I did that for way too long. Seriously? There's nothing in there? Oh, if I push up this time, let's see. <laughs> it's bad. Game, it trolls me so hard. Alright, fine. The elevator's just a joke. Like everything. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. We'll just do random numbers. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad. I wonder if you can find well, the, sheer statistical the number likelihood in another playthrough and enter that in. in a correct combination. If he knew that the combo was 2845, it would be another story entirely. But no, no, this is what he was going to do instead. Because that would be interesting. I haven't seen any numbers, though. It'd be like a Stanley serious environmental storytelling. You thumbs, see the numbers like written trying somewhere Trying to input random. anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Two eight four five. <laughs> see if I can piss off the narrator somewhere. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency <laughs> override kicked in, <laughs> and the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, got the hell along do? with the other story. That's funny. Game doesn't actually care. Alright, so this time we take the escape path. Or we go all the way to the mind control facility but press the on button. Would be the other option. That seemed like the lengthier one to do. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <laughs> no. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. It would be easy to get turned around because they look exactly the same. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <laughs> you fall into a loading screen. That is terrifying. This is the only part of the game that actually feels dated. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. No. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no Why? Why is this in this facility? Man. 
so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Therefore, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, oh. as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. I have a new narrator. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated <laughs> as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Oh, no. Eh, free. The hell? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? <laughs> Are they narrating the narrator? What is this? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh, this is some existential bullshit right here. <laughs> it's like a museum. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development through the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. True. Pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This quarter has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. The two doors. The set of two doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable's design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. This is fucking fascinating. Computers. Hey, credits! Written and designed by Davy Ridden and William Pugh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The impeccable Kevin Brighting as the narrator. This is really clever to put the credits in the little museum section. Made using source. Button sounds. Selection of the sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. <laughs> The office. This is great. I can actually go left or right. How dare you impose choice upon me? Early version of the maintenance room. Point of the Stanley Parable HD remix is to lose. It's to win. More endings, fewer endings, more endings, fewer narrators, more Stanley, less Stanley. September 2012, we submitted the Stanley Parable to Greenlight. Valve's process for proving. Is this just a totally like a developer room now? Seriously, to win the community's approval. Remember the Greenlight process back when Steam actually cared about? What was on their store? Will playing the Stanley Parable help me make friends? I don't have any friends. Ask people to email the narrator for questions. Here are a selection of those emails. Huh. Early version of the lounge. <laughs> previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, a timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone, and not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. Ooh, what is the apartment ending? I haven't gotten that one. Cargo lift. This is Also, this whole developer museum seems like it should have been harder to get to. This felt like one of the easier ones. You just take that escape path. Why 
was intended to offer the choice of staying on or jumping a different path. However, after this early version, we decided we also wanted the option of the player falling to their death. That was the first choice I made. This thing is huge. Maintenance layout. Boy, they give you maps. Ah, obey and disobey. Obey leads to the staircase. Option one. Doorway to maintenance and lounge. Two doorways to the maintenance. Their entrance will be hidden. There's a vent to the confusion ending in maintenance. Because I think that's how I ended up with the uh, I'm dreaming one. Is that what that is? This reminds me of uh, Antichamber, too, which is another good first-person puzzle game. That one had more actual puzzles and really batshit crazy designs. But it could definitely screw with your perception of, like, where you were and how you could do things. I love the little dioramas. Ascending. It's the only version of the ending known as the Zending, which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game. And four major teether trailers, of course, the game's development. Oh, doesn't appear to be working, though. Oh, there it goes. We have to stay in here a bit. There's a lot going on in this museum. Elevator in the monitor room could go up or down with freedom above and countdown below. We abandoned this and players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down and placed the two endings together instead. Early version of the countdown room. This is the freedom ending. The other way I could have gone. Good lord. Okay, that, yeah, this is the other side. It just keeps going. Oh, I don't know. How about they're throwing a surprise party for him for all his button pushing? Recorded dialogue for the entire game roughly three separate times over the two years of development. That's cool. It's a lot of voice work. Oh, I didn't do maintenance? Which one was maintenance then? I guess I never got to that point. What was the one that I just did that was uh, underground, where you ended up dead on a sidewalk? Flying through space. Taking the exit. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. It still counts as, like, one of the paths, I guess. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? <laughs> no, yes. perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time. I have to 
choose escape and quit? <laughs> Game, why? I really get to the end? This is weird! So my only option is to escape and quit. Zoom game, begin the game again, and quit to menu. Do I select quit to menu? It said to do escape and quit. Alright, that's what I clicked. Gamer, how much are you trolling me right now? <laughs> I hit quit. <laughs> He's trolling me very hard, I think. Oh, <laughs> I unlocked an achievement. Welcome back. Fuck you, game. Was all that for not? Does it remember anything I did? Does it care? This is the story of a man. Oh, I'm at the beginning, I think. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What is going on? So. Juicy, it's not like you've played this game before. Is there a clear path which you beat the game, or do you just kind of have to stop whenever you're done with seeing all the endings? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee Feels lounge like I've first, reached just to admire that point it. a couple times, but they just kind of ah, yes, end. Truly a room worth admiring, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Okay, this is... I never took this first door on the left. Which, maybe this is the maintenance room. And so he detoured through the maintenance okay. section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. So this is the confusion ending one. Let's go for it. Let's plunge into another loading screen. But Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. Indeed. So now in order to get back, he needed to go, um, uh, uh, da, 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 da. from here, it's, um, left. You already beat the game on your first run. Uh, I guess, technically, that was a very unsatisfying one. You just follow the narrator's directions to beat the game. There are many endings you can find. One of them is sitting through four hours of baby crying. <laughs> That's insanity. So you just kind of keep going until... Oh, no. No, it's to the right. My mistake. No, 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 no. Not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh, dear. Would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yeah, yep. Okay, okay, yes. I know where it is. This story Stunning, isn't is it? absolutely, definitely this way. How dare you skip frames? This is what I get for following the game and quitting. I'm 
have to restart it again and see if it keeps stuttering. Ah, oh, I'm back here. No, 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 no. This isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This uh. is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. It's all a spoiler. Okay, okay, okay. okay. We just, we just have to get back to um. Oh, who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. The whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't <laughs> wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. Ah, let's put you out there. All right, let me try and uh, reload the game here since I am stuttering for some reason. That's not good. That's what I get for stopping and starting the game with the recording going. I was following your directions, female narrator. like I might stay in for another uh, ending or two we'll see I think I'll get the gist of it this is the story of a man named Stanley Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427 M Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if oh. he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome I fell under his responsibility? <laughs> he had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go anywhere except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing, Nothing will me. break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. <laughs> Hours passed. Then days. Is this just one of had the years endings by. right here? Shutting he the door. He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would <laughs> arrive. Soon, the only choice soon is now, no choice. This will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Comes. Oh, a loading screen. That was one of the endings, I guess. How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Centuries? Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. with my frame rate after starting. It's crazy. It should not be a very difficult game to run. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Done almost this everything was not that I can the remember. Way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly Besides well. All these hidden paths. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Uh, we could do that. We could follow the cargo lift. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. 
I'm not your enemy, really. I definitely like the one where you get off uh, I here. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the really story has the been narrator. about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Jesus. Ah, oh, this is a different That's one. her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Oh, my gosh. Press 8 on your keyboard. I don't want to. I'm going to press 5. 6. F. I'm going to pay respects. F. Fine. Press 8. Nothing happened. Press, maybe the lock is on. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him. And every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Damn you. Press L. Look at him there, pushing buttons. Oh, exactly now I'm Stanley. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. <laughs> But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. <laughs> and each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Oh. Press R to watch TV. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. Stanley's going the crazy. thought excited him terribly. Spend time with the boys. Yeah. Playing with the boys. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. Mm. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. I don't know if I did the yellow line one yet. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. <laughs> and again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Perhaps. Press V to tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. 
How could there possibly be? Ooh. In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. Press E to go to sleep. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. <laughs> but he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Hmm. I'm gonna do it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Please press 4 to question nothing. Do I just press 4? I can't exit the room. Fine. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. Please die. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. <laughs> Game just cuts out. Ah. Uh. It's unsatisfying to me if there's no true ending here where you find out what it's all about. Foundation. We are confirming your shipment of 1,327 cardboard boxes to your place of work. Can you verify that this is correct? Excellent. Your order will arrive <laughs> shortly. Thank you again for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. Those are random, or if they're actually set in there. What else do I have to do? I followed. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So on the right path, I didn't continue through maintenance. I wonder if I changed anything. I don't know what happened to my frame rate also, and I can't get my frame rate to get fixed ever since I restarted the game. It doesn't appear to want to uh, work properly. Um, I guess I can make it all the way to. Well, let's let's go through maintenance. See if that actually this does connect back. This was not the correct back. way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps Obviously, the game looks perfectly fine on my end. I'm not sure first, why it's just, just not recording the frames it. correctly. Oops! As I run into a door. Wow! Yes, this room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. And so he Great. detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Maintenance is an alternate way. Yeah, I saw that there was some kind of vent or something on the map, but... Was it just going through here? So if you go down there, it's bad. <laughs> if you go anywhere in this game, it's basically bad. That just leads right to the meeting room, though. It's the other maintenance way. I 
keep waiting for something to be able to crawl through since crouch is like the only thing I can actually do. Oh, the elevator is the ultimate way, okay. Well, I took the elevator. That led to the, uh... Oh, which one did that lead to? I already forgot what happened on that one. I, I did do it. Yeah, you go down, and he's like, go through the left door. No way, that's not right. Go through the right door. No way, that's not right. I forgot what happened at the end of that one, though. funny you can just connect back to this one yet there was not a single the only thing I can think of that I haven't either. done yet is Feeling make it all the way to the end beneath. and then push the Stanley on button rather than to the go off up button. to his boss's office coming to a staircase Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office so I did the escape one stepping into his manager's office Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life oops shocked Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret Stanley was in Still such a remember. rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he <laughs> didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That's funny. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments. <laughs> I'm going too with fast for the game. New Age music. That's funny. That's really funny. I didn't expect the game to react to me going that <laughs> fast. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. <laughs> Alright, so now we go all the way straight. I don't know. I don't remember if there's any branching paths except for the very end when you can push the on or off button. Assuming that's a branching path. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest. Game is less terrifying though he now. felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? I think Stanley it's some kind of takes a while. Did he have the strength? Oh, look, you can see the platform at the other room leads you to. That's awesome. I never noticed that before. The one where it tells you, yeah, oh, it's a spoiler. You're not supposed to see this room yet. Which would be pretty fun if I had seen that one before this one. Now the monitors. Instead, I followed along dutifully for my first run through. Revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Way. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. There's nothing to do for in here. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. This is 
a very big fancy room with a lot of things, but not nothing actually to do. As far as I can tell. Ooh, you can't go up these stairs, though. Three somewhere? Found one, two, and four. see a three. There's a big ass red button. Can't push it though. There's a three. Three. Disappointing. So they're just here to fuck with me, I think. Alright. Let's go to the final area. Mind controls. Idle, waiting inputs. And when at last he found the source of the room's power. He knew it was... Oh, Stan, me. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Maybe. Oh, Stan, me. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's mm. only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated oh no. without proper DNA identification, oh, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. Yikes. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this oh, is yeah, much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. <laughs> Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing or... everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go, but I'm sure whatever I come up uh, with on the next go around will be even better. Right, My there. goodness, only 34 seconds left, but I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Uh. Why not? 
These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? <laughs> or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to Damn button, it. screen to screen, <laughs> totally on every me out. thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Ah. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Oh, just Why fucking with me. That, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? It's One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. Ugh. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. <laughs> will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. <laughs> Fuck off, narrator. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I exploded. You're so cruel to me, game. That just starts you when off. When Stanley the... came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh my gosh! <sighs> What's left to do? I feel like I've done all the obvious paths. I went downstairs. I went to the escape path. On the right side, I went down the maintenance tunnel. I jumped off the cargo thing. I went through the cargo thing. I've probably seen, what, like eight or so different endings at this point? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge yeah, I'm first, not yellow just to admire I'm not, uh, it. The lounge was sure sublime, I done that one. a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. One thing I didn't do was go through the red door like he wanted Stanley me to. Stanley was so bad at following point. directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired In years other words, ago. defy him up until a point. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Right what? <laughs> I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you. To show, 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 show you something beautiful. Shoo, 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 shoo. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. So now I could walk through the red door. Because I know if you keep walking through the blue door... Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, jump, 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 just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I want it to stop. I would... 
We would both be so much happier if we just stopped. And I think, well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Does it just take me back to the beginning? Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? The fuck? <laughs> Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment, with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> oh, it's a little too bright for me. Ooh. Oh shit, I like fall off the edge. It's beautiful. Must we? No, wait. Where are you going? <laughs> Get the drab office world. Oh no! Stay away from those stairs! If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset! We'll lose all of this! <laughs> I am digging the commentary on. Please, no, Stanley, Gaming. let me stay here! Don't take this from me! Oh my god. That's your option, is to just kill yourself? Please, Stanley, think about what you're and doing. The narrator begs you not to do it. This is messed up. This might be the most messed up one. Well, I don't know. Being found dead on the sidewalk after going crazy is pretty messed up. You leave me no choice. Time to go backwards. No! Oh. oh. Thank God. You lived. You had me worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? We're gonna Groundhog Day this. No. No, no. What are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Stanley, let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? This oh is... My God. Is this really how much you dislike my game? Oh. That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? <laughs> so terrible. Well, maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along. I felt horrible. But I guess that was too much to ask. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this one is yours. Stupid frame rate. Why do you betray me now? Is it over? going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back. Oh no! <laughs> it's so dark! It's so dark! Kill yourself. Oh man, that's so dark. I think... I think that's the end of the endings that I'm aware of. I don't know how many there are. I don't know how many I've kept track of. I'm trying to think if I could even remember. Is if you obey all the way, that's an ending. 
If you go all the way to the end, we'll push the on button and explode. That's an ending. If you go down the stairs, that leads to the death by sidewalk thing, I think. Because you end up going in the basement over and over and go crazy. That's an ending. Um, if you... Sure, yeah, give me a secret passage. I'm basically trying to wrap up my gameplay here. Uh, let's see, if you take the right path and go down the maintenance shaft, that's an ending. If you follow the cargo crate straight across, that's an ending. If you jump off the cargo lift and take the red door, I believe that's the ending I just got. And then if you take, if you jump off the cargo lift and keep on defying him, that's one that leads to the messed up. Um, Stanley stood for a long time in one spot. It's part of a game. Uh, the baby fire one. How long he can go without so dying. that's an ending. So far, he's Which one ended with excellent. the? Uh, oh, the escape. If you take the escape right path, years, that leads I'm to the sure uh, museum. Keep up that good momentum. Let's observe the genius at work. I'm at uh, eight endings, I think. What? You can't climb on the chair? First window on the left. I keep getting these random phone calls, too. Good morning. Thank you for contacting the Future Happiness Foundation. We are confirming your shipment of 1,327 cardboard boxes to your place of work. Can you verify that this is correct? Climb on the chair. Those windows aren't open, though. I bet one of these random doors is open, too. Oh. Sure can climb up on some of these. Jeez. How did I do that? Mmm, that was a little bit of a ramp there. Huh. Oh, back in the voice bell room. What the fuck? <gasps> At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map wow. until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. Wow. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary Never into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural, structural narrative, narrative tropes. tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. <laughs> what do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea, but rephrased it superficially <laughs> to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now, think about it. Would it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? <laughs> Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? Damn it. How long so good about just telling exactly just what you're thinking. All the narration. Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. 
Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. <laughs> Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. It's fair. Well now, I've built up the other options so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Nice. I can't actually select yes anymore. I'm just done. <laughs> That's so weird. I'll give it that. The game is clever as hell with the narration. Really clever. So that's what, nine sort of endings, I guess, I've seen? Um, you really can't get out of this, can you? Click begin the game again. Does it just start you off at the beginning? the hell? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to it's go to the now. meeting room. Perhaps he had simply... God damn it, everything I... Every time I thought I'd seen it, everything. What the fuck? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. And yet this one is always the same. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, all the just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. Then the feeling went away, and he felt sad again. <laughs> then it came narration. back, and lingered for a minute or two. Now it's only half there, just a kind of, um, tingle. How much narration did they add? Holy crap. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really. I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust Don't in someone think else is more difficult. Endings but for the me to fact see at the is that the story has been a what? Really? What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop Unfinished you. Unfinished room. So you go through and play Minecraft and all that. Okay. Um, I think I've explored my options with this game. Uh, I have enjoyed it. It's kind of what I expected, although it's still just incredibly clever with the way the narrator works and responds to the things that you do. The choices are fun. This very much feels like almost a history lesson of a precursor to a lot of those first-person narrative adventure games, uh, as well as first-person puzzle games, uh, too, the way they're designed. Just because it's very simplistic, you can't actually... All you have is just a walking around and an interact button. There's nothing else going on. Uh, so a lot of other games build upon that 
But uh, very cool, very much uh, recommended. Everybody give it a shot. Uh, pretty simple, and I, I know I haven't seen everything this game has to offer. Uh, I don't necessarily need to uh, or care to, but uh, frankly, that one that I did that ended up with the baby and the fire and all that was, and playing Minecraft at one point, like that's that was really great. So I'll, that was probably the peak. After that, everything was just kind of quaint. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, enjoyable uh, for a laugh and for what, two hours it's been now? So, good times. Stanley Parable. So, that will be this one one off uh, Let's Play. I think I will plan on starting uh, my next Let's Play game, Bard's Tale 4, on Friday. Uh, and I will see everybody for that. Thank you so much for joining me here or for watching this recording afterward. Uh, thank you especially to patrons, and happy one-year anniversary for the Patreon page and for our Tomb of Annihilation campaign. Uh, very, very cool. So I'll see you all on uh, Thursday for Crafting Annihilation, Friday for another Let's Play, and then Friday evening for Tomb of Annihilation.